وأقولوا في القرآن ما جاءت به آياته فهو الكريم المنزل وأقول قال الله جل جلاله والمصطفى الهادي ولا أتأول الحمد لله رب العالمين له الحمد الحسن والثناء الجميل وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له يقول الحق وهو يهدي السبيل وأشهد أن سيدنا ونبينا محمد صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وأصحابه والتابعين لهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين أما بعد إن شاء الله تعالى وإن أو سيريز القواعد الفقية المتعلقة بالمعاملات المالية Legal maxims of Islamic jurisprudence related to financial transaction We did the first qaida the first uh, principle the first legal maxim Today, inshallah ta'ala, we're going to go into the second uh, qa'idah uh, related to financial transaction. This qa'idah is, al qa'idah al-thaniya is, al-ibratu fi al-uqudi lil-maqasidi wal-ma'ani la lil-alfazi wal-mabani. This qa'idah is, al-ibratu fi al-uqudi lil-maqasidi wal-ma'ani لا للألفاظ والمباني. The way that we're going to do this principle, إن شاء الله تعالى, is in the following way. Number one, we're going to define this principle. We're going to go through each point and what it means, إن شاء الله تعالى. Second is, we're going to speak about whether this principle is agreed upon or there is a difference of opinion regarding it. Number three, what benefit does this qa'idah have? But what is the benefit in this qa'idah? So the third is fa'idatu al-qa'idah. The benefit that's connected to this principle, inshallah ta'ala, or this legal maxim. Number four is dalilu hadhi al-qa'idah. Four evidences that support this qa'idah. And this qa'ida is grounded and it's rooted from uh, the Qur'an and the Sunnah. Evidence is for it, inshallah ta'ala. Number five, I'm going to mention a very strong statement of Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah. A very beneficial statement of Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah rahimahullah ta'ala. That's number five. Number six, I'm going to speak about that which goes outside this qa'ida. So remember we said at the beginning when we were studying qawaid al-fiqiyah that there could be possible that there are things that go outside the qa'ida. So this qa'ida al-ibratu fil uqudi lil maqasidi wal ma'ani la lil alfazi wal mabani what is the thing that exits this legal maxim or uh, exits this principle. Um, number uh, seven, I'm going to, inshallah ta'ala, speak about ما يتفرع عن, عن هذه القاعدة. ما يتفرع عن هذه القاعدة. What are the things that uh, come under other principles that come under this principle? I'm going to speak about are there any other principles that are built upon this principle? We'll discuss that inshallah ta'ala. And number eight, examples uh, regarding uh, this principle. So we'll speak about amthila uh, ala hadhi al-qa'idah. Number nine, which is the last inshallah ta'ala, we're going to speak about bu'yu mu'asirah. Contemporary transaction that fall under this principle. We're going to apply this qaida on contemporary um, transaction, contemporary uh, financial transaction. So let's start with the first, which is ta'riful qaida. Let's explain this qaida. What does it mean? Al-ibratu fil-uqudi lil-maqasidi wal-maani. 
la lil mabani la lil alfaz wal mabani what does it mean what it means is that what is given consideration in transactions should we give consideration to should we observe the intent of the individual and what he means or should we give consideration to and should we observe the wordings that the individual is using and we don't look at what he means or what he intends that's what the qaida means in transactions should we observe the intent of the individual and what he means or should we observe and should we consider what he says and what he vocalizes that's what the qaida means this qaida اختلف فيها الفقهاء this qaida is not agreed by everybody this qaida is from the qawaid which are مختلف فيه so we've done the first part of our today's session which is to define and explain what the qaida means we've explained it we're now going on to the second which is this qaida is it differed upon do the scholars differ upon this qaida naam this qaida the fuqaha the jurists they differ and they don't all agree because they differ on this qaida they saw it appropriate to word it in a questioning to word it in a questioning format instead of making it a statement because it's a, because the qaida itself is not agreed upon so instead of saying al ibratu fil uqudi lil maqasid wal maani la lil alfaz wal mabani they've chosen to say hal al ibra is the uh, thing that we should observe should the thing that we observe be in transactions the intent okay and what the individual meant or should we observe the wording and that which the individual vocalized you see i structured it in a questioning format instead of a statement format because in the statement format there can be a form of assertion that you're asserting something whereas a questioning is uh, you're not asserting it you're questioning you're interrogating that's what the scholars and the fuqaha and the jurists chose to do because the qaida is not agreed upon aslan but the strongest opinion is that this qaida is that the thing that we should observe and the thing that we should look into and give consideration to is the intent and the meaning not the wordings and that which a person vocalizes so an al ibrata bil maqasid wal maani that what we should give consideration to that which we should take on board is what the person intended and that which they meant not what they said or vocalized and inshallah ta'ala later i'm going to bring evidences for why this opinion is the strongest because tarjihum bi ghayri murajjah yusamma tahakkum we can't say this opinion is stronger than this opinion uh, without providing a reasoning behind it or else we will become uh, people who are unjust if we say this opinion is stronger than this, than this opinion without any evidence then we're doing what is known as tahakkum we're unjustly uh, dictating our opinion unto others so i'm going to come for the evidence is why this opinion is the strongest which is that which we should give consideration to is what the person intended and that which they meant not what they not what they vocalized or that which they said now i move on to the third point which is faidatul qaida what what's the benefit in this qaida what's the actual benefit in this particular qaida the benefit becomes apparent and it becomes clear when we look at a person's statement if a person unrestrictedly says 
something. And it could be taken for many other meanings, or it can be taken for another meaning also. For instance, if somebody says, Bi'tuka, I have sold to you, Bayti, my house, Bi'ishirina alf, for 20,000. I have sold my house for you. Sorry, if somebody says, sorry, Bi'tuka, I have sold you, Binti, my daughter. If someone says, I have sold my daughter, Bi'ishirina alf, for 20,000, I've sold my daughter to you. And the other individual on the other side says, Qabiltu, I've accepted it. Now let's look at the wording of what the individual said. The individual said, Bi'tuka, the guardian of the girl said, Bi'tuka, I have sold. I have what? I've sold my daughter for 20,000. And the, the other individual said what? The other individual said, Qabiltu, I accept it. Here it now becomes apparent the benefit that's in the Qa'idah here, which is what? If you're of the opinion that we give consideration to the wording and the, what the person vocalized, then this nikah is null and void. Because the individual used what? He used the word bi'tu. Where he should have used what? Zawajtuka or ankahtuka. He used the wrong, wrong wording. And what you give consideration to is the wording and that which a person vocalizes. And in this situation, they didn't vocalize what they should have vocalized. And the path you take is there. Whereas the other individual would say, uh, that the intent is, or that, that which I give consideration to is what the person intended. And that which they meant, not necessarily what they said. Even that though later, inshallah ta'ala, we're going to see, does this particular example fall under the qa'idah or is it from those which are um, istithna'at? Are they from the exceptions? We will look at that inshallah ta'ala. Pay attention to this point. Does this particular example fall under the principle or is it an exception? We'll expand on that later. But I just want you to understand this as a, as a prime example for uh, the, the benefit that's in this particular qaida. Another example. Another uh, example. Um, a person says, Kafiltu fulanan bisharti annahu bari. Okay, a person says, Kafiltu. And we know what the word Kafiltu means. It means, Dhimmatin ila dhimma. That's what it means. Kafala, that's what it means. A person is saying, to another individual, that this individual, I am a kafil. Kafil meaning a sponsor. The responsibility of this person is on me. Okay. For what? Like it? With the condition that he's free. So he's, he wants to give money to someone and he says to him, um, he says to them, kafiltu, I am responsible for this individual as with the condition that they are free. Now, the word kafiltu puts him under a category known as kafala. But what he really intended was what? What he intended really was hawala, meaning the per whatever you wanted from this individual is now on me. I am going to pay on their behalf and they are, they're going to be free. But he doesn't mean kafala. So do we look at what he said or do we look at what he meant? That's when the qa'idah becomes apparent. That's when the qa'idah becomes apparent. And the benefit in learning it is at situations like that. Now we're going to go into what are the evidences that support that the intent behind transaction is what is intended and meant and not what was vocalized and said. The evidence for that are four evidences. The first one is the hadith of the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam which is إِنَّمَا الْأَعْمَالُ بِالنِّيَّاتِ وَإِنَّمَا لِكُلِّ مْرِئِ مَا نَوَىٰ This hadith, it made the foundation based on 
the intention. Okay? Every action, whether it be speech, whether it be uh, what you do, it doesn't matter. All of it is based upon all of it is based upon what you intended. That's what the hadith benefits us. So this hadith supports that the intention is what's looked at, not necessarily what the person says or does. Good. The second uh, evidence that is used here is the intent is really what is behind the words of an individual. A person's the scholars they say اعتبار القصود والمعاني أولى من اعتبار الألفاظ to actually give importance to what the person intended is what makes sense that it's given priority over what they vocalized. The reason is because what is it that we intend? What, what is it that when a person says something that you take from it? You take the meaning from it. You take what from it? The meaning from it. And that which a person is saying, you take the meaning out of it. When somebody talks, are you, are you listening to the wordings or are you really listening to the meaning that's coming out of their wordings? You're focusing on the meaning. That's what you're giving consideration to. So what you learn is that the wordings is just a means. It's a wasila. And the objective is the meaning. So how are you going to give... Uh, how are you go, going to give priority to the objectives over, uh, sorry, the, the means over the objectives? That's the second point that was brought in favor for, the, for this principle. Number three, what they brought was the hadith al Imam al Bukhari and Muslim both narrated, which is that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He used a man from the people of Azd. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam He used a man from the people of Azd, tribe of known as Azd. His name was Al Utaybiyah. Al Utubiyah. His name was Al Utubiyah. Radiallahu ta'ala an was a companion. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam used him, this man. For a particular tribe uh, known as Bani, Bani Sulaim. He used them, he told him to go and collect the sadaqah from them, but the zakat from them. So when this man came, they gave him the zakat and they also gave him a gift. Okay, they gave him a gift. So when the man came back to the Prophet, والسلام, when the man came to the Messenger, والسلام, to give the zakat that was given to him, the man said to the Prophet ﷺ, he said, This is for you guys. And the portion that was given to him as a gift, he said, This is a gift that was given to me as a gift. So he said, This is portion, O Messenger of Allah, is for you. And this is a gift that was given to me. Now the Messenger alayhi salatu salam, he said to him, the companion, he said to him, فهل, first the Prophet stood up, he فحمد الله وأثنى عليه, he said praise on Allah Azza wa Jalla, and then he made a khutbah. And from what he said was to the man, or those individuals he wanted to speak to in general, he said, فَهَلَّا جَلَسْتَ فِي بَيْتِ أَبِيكَ وَأُمِّكَ Why didn't you sit in your parents' house, your father and your mother's house? And this gift, this so-called so gift can come to you. If you're telling the truth. What the Prophet was trying to say was that this is not a gift, this was bribery. The Messenger والسلام, did not give consideration to the wordings that the companion used. The companion used the word hadiyah, gift. But the Messenger وسلم, based it on the reality and what it means. The reason is because Hadaya al umal is ghulul. People of positions, when gifts are generally given to them, it's given to them through bribery. It's to get something from them. It's to, uh, it's to get something from them. 
So the Messenger alayhi salatu wasalam, based on this hadith, what did he do? He alayhi salatu wasalam, he based it on what? He based it upon the, uh, the intent and the reality and the meaning that was behind it. Not what this companion vocalized or what he said. He vocalized it as a gift. Or he said that it was a gift from them. He, the Prophet didn't give that consideration. The fourth evidence that they used is the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam's time. At the time of the Prophet والسلام, in transaction, buying and selling was present. The Messenger alayhi salatu wasalam lam yarid an Nabi sallallahu alayhi wasalam dalilun ala al-tizam bi lafz muayyan. The Prophet didn't say that when you're buying and you're selling, you have to use these words. He didn't say that alayhi salatu wasalam. He didn't say that when you're buying and you're selling, that you have to say, I am selling, and the other one says, I have accepted your product. He didn't say that, alayhi salatu wasalam. What is it that the Prophet permitted, alayhi salatu wasalam? So the Messenger, alayhi salatu wasalam, he gave consideration to that which is intended of what both parties understand from one another. Not particular wordings that are used. وَلِذَلِكَ Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymi rahimahullah, he said, إِنَّ الْعَقْدَ جِنْسٌ لَا يُشْرَعُ فِيهِ التَّعَبُّدِ This is the kalam that I was going to say, uh, that I said before, uh, that I will transmit from Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah, which is, إِنَّ الْعَقْدَ Transactions لَا يُشْرَعُ فِيهِ التَّعَبُّدِ There is no uh, shar'i terms that are used when buying and selling. Like when I'm selling to someone, there's no shar'i terms that I have to use. There isn't. There's no word that the Sharia told me to use. And then the other person on the other side who's taking the product, there isn't on his side something he has to say in return. Here, it's all based upon what? It's all based upon مَا يُفْهَمُ مَقْصُودُهُ That which the intent is understood from. And that which the other person means is understood. That's all that matters. Okay? إِنَّ الْعَقْدَ جِنْسٌ لَا يُشْرَعُ فِيهِ التَّعَبُّدُ those four evidences are what the Jumhur al-Ulama, the overwhelming scholars used. The overwhelming majority of scholars from the Hanafiya Madhab, from the Hanafi Madhab, from the Maliki Madhab, from the Shafi'i Madhab, and the Hanbali Madhab. The overwhelming majority of scholars who strengthen this Qaida as to be what? That the thing that's given consideration is the person's intent and that which he means. Not necessarily, not necessarily what they say or vocalize. Now I'm going to, inshallah ta'ala, um, mention istithna anil qa'ida, an exception that leaves this principle, something that doesn't have anything to do with this principle. It gets out of this principle. And that is something we mentioned at the beginning, which is the issue of an nikah. Nikah, which is marriage contract, the scholars they mention, they see nikah, we observe the wording, and we observe that which is vocalized, not what's intended or meant. Why? Because they said, Nikah, it falls under the concept of Al-A'rab, people's honor. And the Sharia gave a lot towards the honor of the people. It did. As you all know, if a person commits zina, uh, to testify against them and say that they committed zina, you would have to bring how many witnesses? Four witnesses. That's the reason is because it's to protect the people's honor. Not one person, not two, not three, four people. To all see a person doing zina, not hugging each other or shaking hands or sleeping in bed together or anything. Seeing the act of zina being done, four people have to be. This is because the religion it gives a lot of consideration towards people's honor. 
The second reason is because they said al aslu fil irdi. The asal for people's honor, the asal for a woman is prohibition. Like you can't have intimate relationship with a woman. Asal is haram until you go through a contract and a marriage. So you can't remove that haram relationship with a woman except through a certain well-established method. So they said this qa'ida, which is al-ibratu fil-uqudi lil-maqasidi wal-ma'ani la lil-alfadi wal-mabani they said this one doesn't apply to a nikah a nikah is an exception take it out of this principle so what is in, what is intended I mean, what is looked at in terms of marriage in an nikah la budda fihi min al-alfad al-ma'luma there are terms that need to be observed there are terms that need to be looked into so if a man says bi'tuka i sell to you what binti my daughter بِعِشْرِينَ أَلْفًا For 20,000, we'll say this nikah is null and void. It's not nikah. Because he has to say زَوَّجْتُكَ or أَنْكَحْتُكَ He has to say that. Or any other terms like that which are known to me nikah. That's very important that you understand it. Um, so we've defined this qa'idah. We've spoken about ta'rif al-qa'idah. We also spoke about the, the scholars differing upon the qa'idah. Number three, we spoke about the benefit in learning the qa'idah. Number four, we gave evidence for this particular qa'idah. The evidence related to this qa'idah. Number five, we mentioned the statement of Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah, a very powerful statement, which he said, in al-aqda jinsu la yusha'u fihi ta'abud. Number six, we mentioned the exception or the thing that leaves this qa'ida, <coughs> we mentioned it, which is an nikah. We said nikah does not fall under this qa'ida. Now we're going to speak about ma yatafarra'u an, an hadhi al-qa'ida. Other principles that come out of this qa'ida. Is there any other principles that come out of this qa'ida? Yes. Number one, annahu la yushra'u lin'iqad al-bay'i lafzun. Since we said that in transaction, what is observed is the intent and what the person meant, not what the person said or what the person vocalizes. Since we said that, that's the qa'idah that we were talking about. The scholars, they took another qa'idah out of this, which is there is no condition for vocalizing in transaction. You don't have to vocalize you don't have to utter anything when you're doing a transaction. And no, la yushtaratu is not a condition. Lin iqadil bay'i for a transaction, a business, a financial transaction, for it to be correct, there's no condition for utterance. There's no condition for vocalizing. There's no condition for speech. There isn't. In other words, yan aqidul bay'i. The transaction can just happen by just by action, without saying anything. And of course, this is called Bay'ul Mu'atat, scholars call it. What is it called? Bay'ul Mu'atat. Bay'ul Mu'atat means a, 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 a transaction happens between two people. Of what? A product. One gives the product and the other one gives the, 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 the money. أن يقع بيع للسلعة ودفع الثمن من غير تخلل من غير تخلل لفظ بغير من غير من غير تخلل لفظ without anyone uttering a word no one saying anything this one gives a product the other one just takes it and he leaves so he goes to the shop he knows how much it costs he comes he walks in he takes the product comes to the uh, cashier, he gives him the, uh, the uh, product, takes the, uh, gives the money, this one takes the uh, product and he leaves. No one spoke to anyone, no one said anything to one another. This is permissible. That it's not a condition to say anything. 
There's no, con- you, this one doesn't have to say how much does it cost and I want to buy it. Okay, how much do you want to give me? No, you don't have to. This is called Bay'ul Mu'atat. This is permissible and it's allowed. This is permissible and it's also allowed. So if that's the case, that it, that is allowed, then another issue falls under this particular issue, which is, what about, or what, what about selling based on writing? If you said that vocalizing, if you said utterance is not a condition for bayer, buying and selling, then what about if I, can I write? Naam. If an individual, he writes, instead of saying anything, that bear is permissible. The person whose writing can be two types. A person who goes to a shop, and of course, he writes on somewhere, instead of speaking. Okay? Then this, of course, is it's permissible. Instead of speaking to one another, they just write to, to one another. This one is, it's It's a person who's present, who's buying from a person who's present in front of him. Here, the second form of writing is a person's absent. He's not with this person. So he's emailing him or sending him a WhatsApp. Or he's speaking to him through social media. Okay? This one, is it permissible? According to the Jumhur Ahl al-Ilmi, the overwhelming majority of scholars is permissible. For example, a person says to another person, you know, bi'ni sayyarataka, sell me your car, bi khamsata ala, 5,000. I want to buy your car from you for 5,000. But he writes it. He writes this to him by email or by WhatsApp. And the other one says, okay, I'll sell it to you. This is permissible. And this is the view of the, as I said, Jumhur Ahl al-Ilm. Here there's a point that needs to be taken into consideration. Two points. When it comes to the issue of writing. Two points need to be taken into consideration. Number one. La budda an takuna al-kitabah mustabina. The writing that this individual is doing to the other person for it to be given consideration, for it to be taken on board, it has to be a writing which is apparent. And it remains. It's a writing that's apparent and it remains. What do we mean by this? Remember we spoke about the forms of transactions that are marriage. We're always going to try to give examples of marriage and of course, Buying and selling as well. A man, he squibbles or he writes in mid-air. And what does he write in mid-air? He writes, anti That you are, I'm an anti-taliq. Anti, he writes in the air, taliq. You are divorced to his wife. Is this given consideration? No. The reason is because this writing, it is not mustabina. It is not. It is not zahir. And there's nothing that's remaining. Or a person scribbles on water. This is also not considered to be anything. All of that, the scholars, they, they put under hadith nafs Hadith nafs means a person talking to themselves. They put it under that. They say, La ibrata. There's no consideration or given to that. So the writing that these two people are sending each other has to be writing which is going to remain and it's going to be there. Also, it has to be marsuma. We're still on the first point. So it's mustabila marsuma. Marsuma means what? The individual who's sending it is known. So it can't just be an anonymous person trying to buy from another person. It has to be a person who's known. 
So they write their name, Fulan ibn Fulan. It's known as them. The second thing that is a condition when it comes to that writing is أَنَّهُ يُشْتَرَطُ أَنْ يَقَعَ الْقَبُولِ أَنْ يَقَعَ الْقَبُولَ فِي الْمَجْلِسِ الَّذِي يَقْرَأُ فِيهِ الْكِتَابَةِ أَمَا يُقْرَأُ فِيهِ الْكِتَابَةِ The second condition is the acceptance has to happen from the individual in the gather in the, in a sit sorry in which he reads the message. So if a person receives a message from a person saying, "Sell me your car," the minute he sits down and he reads it, that minute it's now the majlis, the gather is the sitting of where they're buying and selling. He has to accept then. Because remember, when it comes to buying and selling, there's a majlisul khiyar, a gathering, sitting where both parties have the choice of leaving the contract. Okay? Uh, or the other person has the choice of accepting or rejecting. That majlis is the minute the person reads the message. That's the condition. Another point that needs to be brought on uh, here, which is very important, is the product in which you're asking to sell um, and the other person wants to buy has to not be from the products. It shouldn't be those products that you're not, that when you're buying it and you're selling it, it has to be based upon give it to me and I'll take it from you. There are some products in the religion that the individual has to physically give it to you and you have to physically take it from them. And you have to physically pay for it. It's not allowed or I'll give you the money tomorrow and you give me the product now. It won't accept that. Like gold. The Prophet ﷺ told us it has to be here and here. You can't. So those people who sell gold online, like a juice, it's not permissible. Has to be there, has to be somebody who takes it, somebody gives it. Also money exchange online. When people exchange money online and there's no take and give straight away. Scholars, they bring all of that under, under the hadith of the Prophet ﷺ, which there isn't any what? There is no taqabud fil majlis. The person is not in the gathering to take it, and the other one is not in the gathering to give it. The scholars, they said, if the person has a kafil, a wakil, if a person has the, a wakil who takes his so when the other person, you have somebody with him, okay, the one who's selling, there's a wakil with him from the other person's side. And the one that's buying, there's a wakil from the other one's side. And the product and the money is all given at the same time. So this one gives the money to him, and the other one gives the product to him. And they're all representatives of him, then this is permissible. This is a what? It's a permissible uh, act. So this mas'ala to sarf al-umalat, money transferring, we've spoken about it. And that's an example of the contemporary buyur. Um, we spoke about al-bay'u bi wasa'il al-ittisal al-hadithiyya, selling products online, eBay, selling it on Amazon. You're allowed to sell it and buy it because we said أنه لا يشترط أنه لا يشترط لانعقاد البيع لفظ you don't have to say I sold it or I bought it you don't have to the action is enough the writing is also enough but we said that the writing two conditions the first one is لا بد أن تكون الكتابة مستبينة وأن تكون مرسومة number three we said أنه يشترط أن يقع القبول 
في المجلس الذي يقرا فيه الكتاب اما الرساله first one is that it has to be clear and the writing and apparent it also has to be known who it comes from and number two is انه يشترط ان يقع القبول في المجلس الذي يقرا فيه الكتاب the person who's on the receiving end who's sending the product the minute he sees that message sent to him he has to accept it on the spot and say yes or a no to it why because what we want is ittihad al-majlis bayna al-ijab wal qabul that the accepting and the request both of them are happening in the same time and the way that's going to happen is he's now seen the request so the request has come now okay and the acceptance has to be on the spot we spoke about selling products online and using whether it be these uh, whatsapp or selling it on text messages selling online whatever it may be we said it's permissible as long as it is not silah yushtarutu fiha taqabudi fil majlis like gold silver and the likes of this it has to be physical the two parties have to be present with one another in order for that bait to be permissible and nowadays we've got this mas'ala to sarf al umalat money takes the ruling of gold money takes the ruling of gold so inshallah ta'ala i'm going to stop there anyways Uh, anything which I have said that was wrong or incorrect is from me, Shaytan, and Allah and His Messenger are free from it. Subhanak Allahumma bihamdik. Ashadu Allah ilaha illallah. Astaghfiruk wa atubu ilayhi.